The deadline for submitting short stories to Made in LA Volume 6 is August 31st. Since that's just a few days away, I wanted to come on here and um, talk about the editorial process and what we're looking for, and hopefully encourage some of you who are on the fence to submit your stories. We've got five full-length uh, volumes of short fiction, and the most recent was Made in LA Volume 5, Vantage Points, uh, which came out in 2023. So we're on kind of a two-year schedule at the moment. And... Um, this was a wonderful, wonderful book, and I'm just going to pick one of the stories at random and then tell you kind of what we saw in it and why we selected it. Uh, the first one is The Better Sister by Tiara Ito. Uh, Tiara's on here sometimes giving really useful tips for, um, for writers. Um, and in this story, uh, the heart of it is really about the relationship between a young woman and her sister. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a uh, difficult relationship between them. The younger sister kind of feels like she can't do anything right, and the older sister is just like a super high-performing achiever. Um, and they, they go together to a bookstore in downtown L.A., and then, um, I won't ruin it, but, but a lot of stuff unfolds. But really at the core of the story is that relationship between the two, and I thought it just was so... Um, touching and realistic and complicated that, that that was one of the stories that when our editorial team took a look at it, we're like, yes, absolutely, we have to have this. And that was one where we also worked with Tiara um, through an editing process to kind of sharpen the point and, um, and polish the story overall. Um, so let's see, let's pick another one from here. This one, okay, Looking for Joey by Tisha Marie Reikli Aguilera. Um, this one, you know, it got my heart immediately. It was, it's a story of an older sister who is, whose little brother goes missing and she's trying to um, find him and kind of save him from this, this, the toxic situation he's in, which is that he has come out, but his parents are not supportive and, um, and it's really difficult for him. So, so it's about the sister who goes around looking um, for him throughout the city and and what I personally loved about this story was that it was um, it was charged with this sense of uh, danger, right? Like, what's going to happen to Joey? Is he going to come out okay? And and also, um, it really followed the sister's, you know, her struggle to 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 be a helper and to do everything she could to kind of resolve the situation. And um, and you see her kind of interacting with her friends, um, with sort of people on the street in the parks trying to find him. And, and it really comes through uh, that character's, you know, love and um, love for her brother and um, how much care she has for him. And just the, the, the scenes were so evocative. In, I mean, there's, if you want to talk about, like, don't read this when you're hungry, because <laughs> there's a lot of good food in here. And, um, and just it felt so much like a, a, a real portrait of L.A. That, that, of course, we had to include it when we saw it. Um, and then, well, I just, I was flipping pages back and, um, the next one I came across was, um, by Carter Mycroft. It's called Drift Longshore. And, um, this one I loved because Carter is, is a really talented writer in the way that he can portray weirdness in a very kind of banal setting. So this is, this is actually, I think the th third story that we published by him over the years. And, um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. There's a woman on the beach who, well, I, I won't, I won't go too much into the details, but, um, the way that Carter can capture that weirdness, um, they're such a talented writer. They, they really get to this kind of sense of unreality that so much of LA can, can, um, put off as a vibe. Um, so definitely, definitely check out, um, Carter's story, Drift Longshore. I guess I could go into all of the stories in Volume 5, but I do want to go back a little bit more into the history and talk about some of them that we selected in Volume 4 and Volume 3, too. So Volume 4, Beyond the Precipice, this was really our first, mm, call it post-COVID book, but a lot of the stories, I'm sure, were written kind of in the pre-COVID period. Um, but this book came out in 2022. Um, at the LA Festival of Books. 
Oh, so the first one that I opened to at random was um, Atif Rashid's story Requiem, which is oh, it's such a, a gut punch of a story about grief, about friendship, about how how we kind of try to keep the memory of someone alive and um, and how that like leads us to do a lot of really, you know, things that we wouldn't do otherwise, kind of going to extremes um, in our grief. And, um, and this also had what I thought was um, a really good depiction of a heterosexual relationship. And um, as most of you know, I'm gay. I've never really been in a, you know, sexual heterosexual relationship but um but this one you know i was i was into it and so he uh atif won me over and um i really enjoyed this story there's a lot of um kind of angsty scenes at the beach or at a bar and um it really i thought uh kind of captured an la vibe that one was great um ooh, this one this one is fun it's called the long drop by rachel warecki and it's uh, historical fiction. So it takes place kind of in the early 1900s in L.A. when there's kind of um, almost like gang warfare between families. Like some are Jewish families. I think some are, are um, Latino families um, in like Boyle Heights or around that area. And, um, and the way that some of the problems get worked out is through boxing. And, the, and that's where, you know, all the conflict happens is through these um boxing matches on the rooftop kind of overlooking downtown LA and the the setting is so spectacular and the um the the characters are so surprising right it's a female boxer on a rooftop like figuring out exactly how brutal she should be to her opponent and there's so much wrapped up in that with her emotionally um this was one of those like really finely layered stories that was really enjoyable um to put in the the um the volume Okay, and here's another one. I, I love this story. Um, and it speaks to kind of the the weird factor that I was talking about with Carter's stories. Uh, this one's by Jana Layton, and its um, title is Boys on Mulholland. And it follows um, this pair of young men who are influencers who used to be super close best buddies when they were really successful together and then have kind of fallen apart. Their relationship has disintegrated. They're still in the same circles ish, but, um, now there's kind of a rift between them. But so they get back together at this party where all the other influencers are. And it's like, you know, in the Hills in Hollywood and, and things start to go wrong. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but you know, there's some bad choices made, some, um, mistakes made and, and it kind of follows those two characters and how that night unfolds for them in the next couple days and what, what their how their relationship evolves, um, their friendship evolves. I mean, uh, and and it also has this thread of real creepiness around the fate of one of the other characters that's in this like kind of otherworldly Hollywood Hills with bizarre encounters. It and it has um, if you've ever read Cold Heart Canyon by Clive Barker, it has that same kind of feel where it's like the real and the unreal are mixed together and. Um, we can't really tell them apart. And that leads me to actually another story in this book, in volume four of Made in LA, which um, we titled Beyond the Precipice, because a lot of the characters in this book uh, were going past what they knew and um, finding themselves in kind of unfamiliar places, or, or like the title of uh, Rachel's story, A Long Drop. Um, so this one by, was by Nick Doretta. Nick is a mystery writer who's, um, A Deadly Walk in Devon came out earlier this year. So, you know, we've been publishing Nick for a few years and then he had his big break with this book and now he's got a few signed, um, with a small press and they keep coming out like there's one each year for the next couple of years. So, uh, it's been so exciting to see Nick kind of blossom and, um, be going places. So this was, um... I think it was the first real like COVID era set story. Um, and you know, we published it in 2022, I think. So, you know, one of the things I love about Made in LA is we can, we can find and select stories by writers that are as, as contemporary and recent as fresh as anything else out there. You know, our, our turnaround time is like nine months from submission to publication. Um, and so we get to like see 
kind of stories that um, the writers have had in their hard drives or, or wherever they keep them for a while, or ones that they've just written. Like I know right now it's, um, it's August 2024, and some of the stories that we're reading for Volume 6 to publish um, in April next year were just written. So it's, it's fun to have that kind of rapid turnaround in publishing because it is so rare. It is so rare. Uh, it is way more common to be working on a, on a book and then, you know, a couple years pass, you finally finish it, you get it off to your agent or um, your editor, and then a couple years pass, and then it finally comes out, and you're years past where you were when you were writing that story. So we here at A Made in LA, we just have like a, a little bit more flexibility with our schedules, and we can get stories out there, you know, really soon after they're drafted. And we go through an editing process with every story, some more um, intense than others, um, but every story gets edited so that um, it's as polished as it can be. That includes reprints. So we do accept reprints. Um, and in some of the cases where we've accepted a reprint, we've also worked with the author to edit it a little bit more um, just to make sure that it's, you know, as, as strong as it could be. Um, and from what we've heard, you know, the authors really appreciate that, um, that care that we take with their stories. So I think I got a little off track, but I was talking about Nick's story. Um, the title of that is Pandemic Salon. And um, this is, it's, oh, I love this story. It's about kind of an actor who's uh, got a, you know, a theater production that he's getting ready for, kind of an older um, gentleman. And it's right on the cusp of the pandemic and then all of the theaters close. And suddenly, you know, like everyone else uh, who was in theater back then, but, you know, also many other jobs, um, he's kind of out of work and doesn't know what to do with himself, kind of isolating at home alone um, in that case. And he learns of an opportunity, and it's to perform at this house in the Hollywood Hills in front of an audience, um, and everyone is masked. And I don't mean just, like, COVID masked. Everyone is, like, masked masked, like, full masks, like very creepy vibes. If you can tell, I love a creepy story. And um, many of my co-editors also um, enjoy those vibes. So so it's, you know, sure, I'll take a like fun and light romance. But if you want to do creepy LA, I'm, I'm here for you. Uh, I'm ready to read it. Um, so yeah, so Nick's story was about that that actor. And um, it just, you know, it, it it's it it's one of those stories that it, when it came to us, it was just so polished and perfect and like tone, the tone, he hit it right on the mark so that, um, yeah, we, we obviously were like, yes, yes, please. And that I think was the third story of Nick's that we had published. So I think he and Carter are in a tie for the most stories, um, across all of the volumes, I believe. Um, maybe that will change with volume six. We'll see. Okay, and then let's go back even further to Made in LA, Volume 3, Art of Transformation. This one was originally scheduled to come out in April 2020, and then, whoops, you know, um, something happened. And um, we did manage to bring it out later that year. So we had, like, a Zoom Halloween party and then a launch party online for Made in LA, Volume 3. And I think those those uh, videos are probably still up. Um, yeah, what a time. So these were all like written and edited, um, you know, around before 2020. And let's see, which one? Oh, so Sarah Chisholm is one of our co-editors now and um, had submitted a few stories for volume three, two of which made it into the book. Um, and this one I love, it's called We Made, sorry, We Found Love as the Undead. And it's about this, um, this graffiti artist in Little Tokyo who has the ability to resurrect um, these three sisters who keep recurringly killing themselves. Um, and he resurrects them by like painting them with, with his um, spray cans. And, and again, to talk about creepy, um, it's, it's kind of a, a beautiful undead love story, uh, but with a really dark kind of undercurrent. Yeah, Sarah Sarah's amazing. And I want to I want to just reassure everyone: not every story in these anthologies is creepy. Uh, plenty of them are not. Um, so let's find one that's not. Oh, this one this one was sweet. Um, so this one, uh, "Angels Live Here" 
by Nolan Knight. It takes place... I picture this... Um, I don't think it's actually stated, but um, I picture this story taking place in the Dresden Room. So it's a bartender um, who is grappling with addiction and sobriety and um, about his his like kind of childhood memories and also his like current problems. Um, but it has, it has just such a perfect, um, LA feel that like, you feel like you're stepping out onto like Hillhurst, um, in Los Feliz and like that you're right alongside this character. Um, so that one's great and not at all creepy. It's actually poignant and, and sad to some extent. And then I'm avoiding some additional creepy ones. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not a crybaby, but sometimes I do, you know, get a little teary-eyed reading these stories. Uh, this one in particular, the title is The Good Life of Duke, and it's by Eric Gonzalez Kramer, and it's about a um, young man who's kind of struggling in L.A. alone. He's a transplant. He's, you know, just arrived and um, very lonely, and I think maybe, like, broke up with his girlfriend or whatever, and, um, and adopts a dog. Uh, that was sort of uh, survived a hit and run um, incident, and it's about their relationship, and it's a little bit whimsical, a little bit magical, um, and and it's it's heartwarming and sad and um, not at all creepy. Even though there's a little bit of of sort of magical realism that's there, not creepy. I'll do one more from here. Oh, this one's great, actually. Okay, so um, Lenore Robinson wrote a story called Hashtag Millennial Existentialism. And, and this story to me would be perfect to include in volume six if we hadn't already published it in volume three. It has like Chapel Rowan vibes all the way through. Like it is about going out in Echo Park as a young person, like trying to find some fun, trying to find your, your scene, um, being isolated, but wanting to be around people. Um, it just has that, it has that perfect, like, how do I find my place in L.A. when, when I just arrived, um, vibe. And, and, you know, ladies kissing. So that's a good one. Um, and then, oof, okay. And I want to just shout out to Allison Rose, who writes a fierce story in here called Night of Fires, um, which is about two sisters who are going out around the town, um, catching up in a way, but there's this undercurrent of, um, resentment and, um, trauma about what they've been through, um, surviving as orphans after their parents were killed in a, in a house fire. Um, and this is just one that just keeps ratcheting up the tension until finally, like, it blows up right at the end in such a perfect way. Yes. Um, this was a pretty creepy volume in case you're, you're interested in that type of stuff. So that's it. I mean, I don't want to delve into too much. I've been on here for a while, but, um, just if you're a writer out there with a story that is set in LA, we want to read it. Um, we've got at this point, 90 plus stories that we're working our way through. So, um, you're again in good company if you submit your story and, um, we'll be reading through them over the remainder of the summer and part of the fall sending out acceptances late fall, uh, hopefully, and our team is just really excited to bring you a new volume of short stories that showcase the, the wild, um, diverse, and sometimes creepy life that uh, exists here in Los Angeles. So we hope to read your stuff soon. Take care, everyone.